Yeah, it's doing some damage. It's going! <laughs> hey everybody, it's Rob here. This is the Whirlwind Barbarian with Dust Devils. <laughs> Farming some Helltide. And um, yeah, I think the build is uh, pretty insane. <laughs> like, we just spin and wherever we go, we see some twisters. Oh, there was something in the back. I must get it real quick. It's also pretty good on single target, actually. We killed Lilith with it, we did Nightmare Dungeon 200, and uh, yeah, we just spin. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> okay, there's little event here, right? we just spin. Maybe we can maybe do this event, like, just see what the Twister Madness is gonna entail. Oh, there was uh, some threat level. But they can't go way too fast. But yeah, you just uh, press your buttons, like you have three shouts, it spawns, and whenever you um, whirlwind, it spawns twisters too. And so just like that, we keep spawning more and more twisters. It's a pretty intense build. Oh yeah, events are boring. We already completed it, basically. So wherever you go, you start spinning and you start casting twisters. And we even proc twisters when we don't attack, which is the craziest thing. So here, I don't even attack. Look. <laughs> they just auto-kill themselves. And look how many twisters there are. And yeah, we also heal when we spin and we get fortify when we spin. You see, like, whenever we spin, like, the twisters just follow us. And whenever they hit enemies, they multiply. And whenever we get hit by enemies, they also multiply. So yeah, I'm not even attacking. Look at this. Woof. <laughs> Get twisters everywhere, my friends. But, uh, it's, it's a pretty cool build. And um, yeah, it can do the hardest content in the game. It can uh, kill every boss in the game. We have not tested it against the uber uber boss yet. But against normal uber bosses, uh, it's pretty good. And yeah, if you just want to have some fun, like uh, spinning through the hell tide. I don't have max movement speed right now. Like you can make this, uh, you know, work a lot faster than it already is. If you stack some more movement speed. Um, like you see in my FXs right now, I only have like 20% movement speed on this one. So whenever we become unstoppable, this is max movement speed, by the way. But we don't have it quite when we spin. But yeah, we basically just are the angel of death. Like we just like, you know, spin and we bring death. We bring death to all the, all the monsters around us. So this is how you would like play. You can just like perma spin because our fury kind of keeps up, especially if we cast our stuff. And then we just spin and uh, kill some monsters here. Help our fellow friends out. Cast even more. And let's go over the build here, I think, because this is so much fun. <laughs> Alright. So, the base principle of the build is we have um, Whirlwind here to create um, a Dust Devil. So whenever we spin, you see, it already creates Dust Devils. And we have... Um, chance of creating more dust devils so you see it's always there actually on, on the same pixel uh, so when you start spinning there's always two twisters you see they always look merged but it's two like you can tell if you're really paying attention that it's two of them and they have also a pretty big size but there's a hundred percent chance to spawn two twisters because we have it on our one hander and we have it on our two hander so whenever we spin it not only casts uh, two twisters so that's every 0.7 seconds we spin, it casts twisters. Then we're also casting twisters every time we um, shout. So you can see here our shouts uh, generate even more twisters, you can see here. And those twisters are doubled, so um, they also have 100% chance to double. So instead of 5, we're spawning 10 twisters. And then on top of this, whenever we generate fury, and we generate a lot of fury, I'll actually show this to you, um, just on the single targets, target dummy. Whenever we generate Fury, we also get um, a Twister proc. And Whirlwind is actually a really good skill, as long as there's enemies to hit, to generate a bunch of Fury. Because there is a rune here, the second one. Gain one Fury or four Fury if an enemy, uh, an elite enemy is hit with Whirlwind. And um, you can also actually increase your Whirlwind size by um, adding uh, another... Um, Tempered ethics, but that's not what we choose to do in this build. Like, we just keep scaling our twisters. So we have uh, some pretty insane twisters. 
and um, this is another way of spawning it like basically we just need to generate a hundred and fury total and another way of generating that fury while we are spinning is also um, a stat that we have here and this is called fury on kill so whenever you kill an enemy it also spawns so here you won't um, you won't see the kills because we're not killing anything but if we start spinning here like look what happens <laughs> this is elites now yes this this is how it looks if you spin on elites and you can also look at the cooldown <laughs> reduction like, okay i didn't even i didn't do this before this video <laughs> on this so it's actually pretty crazy okay you can see my game kind of lagging um so yeah we spawned a lot of twisters <laughs> <laughs> like this is actually live uh, video recording my friends so I did actually not do this beforehand so yeah it, uh, you press your buttons and you also almost have a perma ultimate and yeah it um, it's just blasting basically yes you can press all your buttons and you see like these these are ticks for like two million something like that damage and and we only spin and we win until the game crashes okay you can see how it all works in action like in Helltide the monster just dies after one spin here you actually keep spinning and see this is without shouts this is only my whirlwind so this is just baseline whirlwind right and then this is like how it looks when you also add the shots and then it would even go crazier when enemies are dying and you generate more fury to create even more of those um of those twisters here after generating a hundred because you can see this is the um, buff here and you can see if I attack once boom, it instantly triggers like three times or something the, the um, icon here doesn't even keep up so fast you can see how fast I generate this icon like you see it appearing and despawning because it just needs a direct damage to trigger and every twist that it hits an enemy is direct damage to trigger it right so it goes completely nuts like it just keeps spamming it basically and there's just so many twisters okay Let's go over the entire gear after you, like, now you understand the principle of the build. So we are rocking Fortify here on our helm. This one just helps you, um, just keeping your Fortify full whenever you generate a Fury. And we have all the ways that I just described to generate Fury. And yeah, the other stats here, Challenging Shot cooldown is really nice in high tiers. I use it in tier 200. Um, mm -hmm. You can see here my Challenging Shot only has, like, less than 10 seconds cooldown. Um, because first of all, we have um, our Bolts Chieftain. So whenever we press anything... Um, the cooldown is instantly reset, so challenging shout. Cooldown is really good. We have 10 seconds cooldown and it's up for 7 seconds and it's giving you a 40% damage reduction. And this is basically up 80% of the time. Um, you can even, if you hit this with a greater affix, and not a greater affix, with the master working, you can get challenging shout to uh, 7 seconds cooldown and 7 seconds duration and then you're gonna have it permanently. So yeah, that's uh, pretty cool. And concussion is also cool because we use maces and it helps us to apply stun. Actually, I'm not even sure if I... Yeah, I didn't even respec my... My uh, mace damage here. Oh, yeah, we'll go over the skill tree in a second. Um, then we have the Rage of Hourglass. This is why um, the shout cooldown is reset even faster here on, a single, on the, these bosses. You can see my challenging shout. It's just about to run out and we can cast it again. So here it's already permanent as long as you're hitting enemies. So you don't need to inflict the bleed on um, elites anymore. You can inflict the bleed on anything. And Whirlwind is doing that with its uh, second rune. So you just inflict the bleeds and you get cooldown reduction. This also works for your ultimate. You can kind of see here how the cooldown goes down. It went from 41, like here, it keeps going down whenever I attack, right? So that's pretty cool. Like you just attack and uh, all these twisters and you just like keep spinning and you inflict bleeds. Um, then on the gloves here right now, we are playing Berserk, in, uh, duration increase. So whenever we spin, Whirlwind is a core skill and this increases Berserking. So this is just perma Berserking. I also have it on my leap right now. It might be a bit overkill, but uh, you know, Berserking is pretty important because it also helps us with our key passive. Stun duration here as well. This helps you stagger. You can see here the stagger bar of these uh, these guys uh, goes. Uh, now I spin for a lot, but like it basically goes full pretty fast, and then they are staggered. On the boots, we play Juggernaut. This one is to reach. Uh, I think on uh, 199 monster level, you need a 1600 400 uh, 16. One, 16,400 armor, so we have the armor cap here. Um, then on the boots, we play movement speed. Usually I have, if you want a more offensive setup and less movement speed for 200, you can put the Berserking on your boots and you can just put the uh, movement speed away, basically, and then you can play another offensive aspect. That's probably what you can do if you want to play Ramalalis. There's different versions. 
Um, then we have on our weapon, we have the shouts. And this is very important to have on the weapon because we get the size multiplier and the damage multiplier. And yeah, here it's really important to have 100% chance combined. You cannot go above 100% chance. So you want, here I have 70, here I have 30. Um, so I have 100% chance. If you have the perfect item, say you get so lucky that you triple crit on the Dust Devil size, you, you're going to be fine with just a two-hander and then you can put um, size here as well. And you get a triple chance here. And yeah, I actually got so lucky and I got Dust Devil size triple raw on this maze. We actually did it live on stream, it was funny. And yeah, this is how the maze looks. And we are unfortunately uh, forced to play um, in our calm. Uh, we don't get the triple bonus because we are spinning, so we are always moving, right? Uh, but if we would um, be standing still, we would get triple the bonus, but we are getting 10% from this anyways. I have not really seen any better ethics. Like, if you have a Ramalali's weapon, that works. Or if you have the Starless Sky, that also works. But uh, right now we are playing in a calm. Um, there's, not, there's simply no effects. Like, you might say Edge Master, but Edge Master only buffs your skills. Show this, uh, show the cases. I tested this, I'll show this to you real quick. So it says here, on Edge Master it says skills deal up to. The problem is your Twister, your Dust Devil, is not a skill. So Edge Master unfortunately doesn't work. So yeah, we kind of have like one offensive slot that is only 10%. So um, if you have some uh, useful uniques, you might as well play these, or Grandfather in the end. And then, yeah, I actually got a triple uh, Greater Ethics Roll weapon here. That is pretty nice. It's giving us... Uh, like insane stats, and I mean, you guys can see here, this is like one of the best weapons right now in the game. I can probably redo my master working and get even more Dust Devil size. But the Fury on kill and also 4k life, you can see here, my life is uh, buffed. We have 60k life and without this weapon, we have we have 10k less. So this actually, this 4k life, because it's a multiplier with all your life percent, actually gives me 10k life in total with uh, with my challenging shoutout. You see, 49, 45 and 49, 50, 59, 49. Um, and then we are playing Grind here. This is just for moving around. Um, again, you can play Starless Sky if you have. It also creates Twisters because you see here our um, Leap has a Fury generation and it also helps you uh, to get the stack up up. So whenever we Leap, we generate a bunch of Fury and that's why uh, the Twisters are spawning. See, boom. Then we ha but yeah, this, this could be replaced as well with, uh, you know, Starless Sky or something, um, some offensive aspect. If you want, but I, I like the leap. Like it, uh, it allows you to, you know, skip a lot of uh, the maps, and it just makes it a lot faster. But if you just like spin to win, you can like uh, play Star Sky if you have it. Um, and then yeah, on on this build here, you don't really need attack speed because attack speed doesn't scale your whirlwind. Uh, but I still have this because this was used with my double swing stuff. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna have a planner with all the stat priorities uh, in the description below. And obviously we also have Fury on kill here, and uh, this one is the cooldown reduction for our shots, that's why it's like only 10 seconds. And yeah, on the amulet here we play elements, we also don't really have any uh, better offensive aspects. I know like elements and inner calm is kind of like a, you know, not that much DPS choice, but I don't have any uber uniques yet, and I want to make a build completely without any uber uniques that can clear 200 and all the content in the game basically. But yeah, this is how the amulet looks, movement speed cooldown, crit chance, and then I have leap cooldown, it's pretty cool. You can just leap around fast. And uh, resource generation with dual wielded weapons. And I also have resource generation on the rings. And what resource generation does, it's basically a multiplier. So whenever we kill a target, we get about, here we get like 30, and here we get another like 15. We get about 50 fury when we kill a target. We also have some paragon nodes that give us fury on hit. So we get about 50 fury when we hit a target. <laughs> so whenever we hit a target, like it basically, is multiplied by your resource generation. And you see here we have 15, 21, and uh, 25. And later on, when I have Shako and everything, the, the target goal is to get this to about 100 Fury per kill. So you wanna generate, whenever you kill a monster, you wanna generate about 100 Fury. And I'm almost there, and you can reach it if you have enough, because then every monster kill will trigger our... Um, devilish aspect. So you kill one monster, it's gonna spawn three twisters. You kill the next monster, it's gonna spawn three, well, it's gonna spawn six twisters because we have double chance, right? So you kill one monster, it spawns six twisters. You kill the next monster, it spawns six twisters. It's insane. And it's why resource generation is, is so good. And right now, you can also play a two-handed weapon, but right now I like to play one-hander, so we are playing uh, one sword and one mace. A sword is to inflict bleeds with our um, stuff to trigger um, our chest. 
or Rage of Hourglass, because um, on Whirlwind there is a rune, and we need this. Only this rune makes you inflict bleeds. It actually brings us to the skill tree. Uh, the reason we play Mace is so we can benefit from Wallop, so we're getting a 15x, and we can benefit from Concussion, which is in the utility uh, slot, and very, you know, there's nothing else to get. So Concussion is still very good to increase the stagger on the boss. So yeah, this is the skill tree. Um, we have Lunging Strike just to unlock, and we only have one point in Whirlwind, because Whirlwind is not our main damage. Whirlwind is just there to generate Fury and to spawn Twisters, so, um, and to apply Bleed. So it has three purposes. Generate Fury, spawn Twisters, apply Bleed for all cooldowns. And uh, we do not scale Whirlwind damage. Whirlwind is a very poor skill in terms of damage. It almost itself does no damage. It's basically a support skill, and that's the reason why we use it. Um, then we have one point here in pressure point. You can also put more points. This is to keep up vulnerable. If you are not killing the enemies um, when you explo exploiter three second range, because you only have three seconds here before they become unvulnerable, um, you only rely on um, pressure point. And I don't really like to rely that much on RNG, but there's not really any like easy way to proc vulnerable. Hopefully the season theme the, for season four, because we don't have this on the PTR, will uh, fix that problem. But yeah, we'll see. So for now, you can also put three points in pressure point. Then we have some defensive stuff here. We have the Radiant Cry. This one helps us with our resource generation. So whenever our Radiant Cry is active, if we kill a monster, like we already uh, spoil in the Twisters, right? So that's why it goes this crazy. And um, yeah, the resource generation is just insane. Then we have one point in Toughest Nades, one point in Outsburst. This is also to trigger um, more bleeds from ranged targets. In low content, you don't really need this, so it probably is good to remove these, put them in pressure point for low content for more DPS. But I like it in uh, in like high pit runs. Um, whenever an archer hits you, he, he gets um, the bleed proc automatically, and it helps you with some more damage reduction from bleeding enemies. And it also triggers, actually, there's a second purpose on this build. It also helps you trigger the twisters if you get hit, because if you get hit, it uh, procs uh, thorns, and that uh, thorns can kill the enemy, at least in low content, like if you're doing Helltide. I'll show this to you real quick. This, this is actually gonna be an insane showcase, so. Uh, if you um, play Helltide, you can just rely on this completely, and let the enemies um, just kill you. Look at this. I just get hit, I do nothing. Boom. That's it, I didn't do anything. I just stand there, and everything dies. I can probably stand next to this goblin and let it and get it let it get killed. Boom, goblin dead. I didn't even do anything. Pick up the stuff. That's it. So that's also one of the reasons why this is such a such a cool thing to have. Like you just stand here. Boom. And I can just explain this to you. If there would be an event or something here, we could trigger it and just explain it to you, and everything would die anyway. So we just stand in the middle here. Alright, that's the reason for these two skills. And then challenging shot for high content. Uh, war cry for damage. Uh, we have short duration, leap to get around quick. Uh, then we have a bunch of like um, fury generation here. Again, it's really good for our 100 fury per enemy killed. I'll probably do separately the math on that if this goes live like this. Because um, it's going to be pretty important to have exactly 100 fury per enemy kill. Because <laughs> it's going to spawn so many twisters, it's insane. <laughs> yeah, pig herbs, yes. And then damage reduction and uh, also a berserking when I hit something with leap. Pretty cool. A pit fighter because we are ranged counter offensive we get our um, fortify from numbing range uh, there's also if you have shako if you already are lucky enough to have a shako um, you can uh, get rid of numbing wrath and then put paragon points into warbringer just for the fortify but for now uh, we get we get fortify from numbing wrath so counter offensive is active and then we already talked about these two um, and then this is also like we spend fury whenever we spin so if we were to lose some life I don't know if these guys will, uh, they won't even touch us. But if we were to lose some life, uh, we can just spin and get it back, basically, yes. There we go. I have to, like, spin for, like, a second or something. And yeah, then we have Wrath of the Berserk, plus Unconstrained, uh, big damage multiplier. Paragon points, looks like this. We have Exploit in the starter board, then we have Wrath. Wrath also, whenever we hit something with Whirlwind, which happens very frequently, and we have a high crit chance, we get even more fury. This, unfortunately, does not work with the Twister, because it says, like Edge Master, it says skills. Dust Devil is not a skill, but it works with Whirlwind and is really strong. And frankly, if it were to work with Twisters, it would be completely broken, because if every Twister, every Twister like 
I mean, you guys saw on the dummy, every twist that produces like a billion numbers per second. So if every twist that would uh, generate fury, then we would have an infinite uh, proc chain. But yeah, it doesn't work on a twister, but it still works on whirlwind and hence it's still really good. And it gives you some nice crit damage. Um, then we play Twister, this is a no-brainer, we have the Twister build, we play the Twister Glyph, 500 Twister damage and another 1.13 multiplier. If you have two more Paragon points, you can, um, you know, put uh, two points here, so you get this strength here as well. But uh, I think we already have so much additive, but yeah. Um, then down here we have uh, Flawless Technique, this even gives you more uh, crit chance. We actually should be able to reach 100%, I'm not sure if I have it right now. But I'll be very close. It depends a bit on your greater affixes uh, rolls and stuff. So you can see I didn't upgrade, I didn't crit this one. But like, I think I'm going to make this build. So in the end, we're going to have 100% crit chance. Um, right now, we are rocking 66 plus 8. Uh, so we have 74. But we can reach 100. Like, we have like uh, three quarters of our hits will be crits. If you have the elixir, it's already going to be 90%. And then if you, uh, you know... Uh, crit on uh, crit on the crit chance or if you have a greater role here uh, You'll definitely reach 100% crit chance like if you min max this build you're gonna have 100% crit chance So it's pretty cool uh, We play uh, carnage here for attack speed We have ira here for berserking and berserking multipliers and you kind of want to see here With the new blood rage up here. We have um, might and the blood rage and with the new Oh, Actually, there's there should be uh, I even had the wrong rule this should not be my. I was switching with two two and this should be uh, ambidextrous because we are dual. We, uh, we are dual building. So I was even missing eight percent damage here. Not that it matters. <laughs> but yeah, you want to have um, blood rage and you want to have as much berserking damage to just hit the bonus. You guys can see here if I remove one berserking node, it goes a bit down, right? So what I found to be the best, you need to have two damage while berserking rolls and you don't need to crit them. So uh, I have one berserking node here which is the max roll actually and i have one berserking node here and with these two plus this paragon nodes you should be able to get the maximum multiplier which is 1.3 from blood rage so it's still a very good even though it's been nerfed it was kind of op before and it's still a very good passive which gives you 30 percent damage and keep in mind not only does this berserking damage gives you multiplicative damage but it also gives you additive damage if i just press my buttons like i already get a bunch more and uh, yeah, the expertise is X, still it's got nerf, but it's still good. In the end game, you might want to try uh, attacking with a two-hander because there's something very interesting I figured out. It's gonna be the last point here. So you can see here, the damage is kind of based on the whatever weapon you're holding right now. So you can see here 4.7, but if I'm switching my weapon to the X and then I attack, you see my 4.7, boom, goes to 5.8. So you could make an argument of playing with a two-hander, Right now, I like the one-hand setup a bit better because it basically it makes you attack faster, which spawns the twisters faster and generates fury faster. But in the end game, probably if it's like fully min max, you might want to try a two-hand setup. I might try that too soon. But for now, I think the dual wielding I like the most because you're just so fast and you know, like it just looks cool, like you're just rocking a bunch of twisters, and it's a ton of fun. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this overview. Spin to win is here with a twist. Kappa, pun intended. So we are playing Spin to Win Twister. Our main damage is not Whirlwind, but our main damage is the Twister. And I don't know about you guys, but I like it. I mean, this is pretty cool. This is a true Whirlwind build. I hope you enjoyed this overview, guys. The planner, again, is going to be uh, in the description. It's going to be right here. Rob's Dust Devil. Take care, my friends, and I'll see you soon. GG. Easy tank. Or oh, they die instantly. Or oh, just kill them all. My god, the damage is insane. What happened? <laughs> it just spawned so many twisters, dude. 
1.5 billion with that uh, blast wave. You don't even get to see the monsters, man. Just die off screen. It's great. Make some next level leaps here. Look at the cooldowns now. Bit of a different setup against uh, the bosses. But it's fine, like you're just gonna have a boss killer. This is also like one of the worst ones. Cause this one is small, like you need big hitbox with Twister. No problem like this. Tier 200 complete. Bam. If you like this video, Make sure to subscribe, leave a like or a comment. I'm also live on Twitch almost every day, so come and say hi.